Hey guys, I got a brand new video for you today and today we're looking at the GH5 and if you like cameras that are awesome at autofocus and video, don't watch this video and uh, let's roll the unboxing. All right guys, so going over the specs, the GH5 is a 20.3 megapixel micro four thirds sensor. And the main reason why you would probably buy this camera is for these options, 4K at 60 FPS, 4K uh, 30 frames per second, 24 frames per second in 10 bit with 422 color. And uh, also you get some really high frame rates in 1080p up to 180 FPS. And uh, I did a lot of tests with this camera. I had this camera in Nashville for a week last week and uh, I kind of missed out on all the excitement and drama behind the autofocus system on this camera because I took it out and used it and made cool videos with it and I didn't really care about the autofocus because a lot of the videos I was shooting was with the Metabones and I was just manually focusing anyway. But let's move on. This camera has a five axis in-body stabilization which is freaking amazing. Uh, way better than the Sony a7R 2 that I had. It's really nice on the a7R 2 but I just found this camera especially paired up with a lens that had image stabilization. Uh, it was so good. I, a lot of the shots I did that I'll show you later we're all handheld and they actually look like they were on a gimbal. Uh, this EVF is amazing. It's 3.68 million dots. I'm pretty sure that's the highest that you can get right now. Uh, the X-Pro2 is pretty awesome and so is the X-T2, but this viewfinder is nuts. And I keep pointing at the camera because I'm filming with the GH5 right now. It has a flip around touch screen. It's 1.68 million dots. It's pretty nice. It's, it's pretty bright. I don't think it's as bright as the X-T2 screen. It's definitely just as good. And uh, it's nice having a flip out screen. I can see myself right now and see if I'm in focus, even though I'm kind of far away, I'm, I think it's in focus. The autofocus system in photos and video is 255 autofocus points. It uses contrast detection, so that's kind of why it's not very good. And uh, I'm not gonna get into the drama. I mean, it's contrast detection versus something like Sony using a phase detection system. It's just night and day difference not even worth comparing. If you want to watch some videos comparing the autofocus system, there's hundreds out there. Max did a really good one where he spent like three days doing tests. I don't have time for that. I got to make money. I got to make videos and get paid. So I don't have time to play with that. Most of the time when I'm doing client jobs, I'm manually focusing anyway. So it's not a big deal to me. And when I do need autofocus and video, I can use a6300. Camera has 12 FPS continuous shooting. I didn't do too much photography with it. I took some shots, but uh, yeah, it does have 12 frames continuous shooting. It also has 6K photo video mode where you can actually film like video clips in 6K and then extract a photo out of that. And uh, that's pretty cool actually. The camera has dual UHS-2 card slots and it also has weather sealing, magnesium alloy body. And the camera is actually super ergonomic. The button placement's nice. The camera feels nice in the hand. Um, it's obviously kind of big for a micro four thirds camera, but um, I really actually like the size of the camera. And then lastly, it has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. So I kind of want to just get into the facts here. I shot some video with it and I was actually out shooting a music video as well in Nashville. And uh, I can show some clips in that, but I'll actually be able to link you that later once I get the video finished. Everything you see in this video test was handheld, either using the 42.5 millimeter F 1.7 lens from Panasonic, and it has image stabilization. And I use the Sigma 18 to 35 with the Metabone Speed Booster, uh, not the 6.81, but the 7.1, and uh, it works better with EFS lenses, I guess, uh, not a full frame lens. All right, so check out the video.
All right, guys, so I'm blown away with the image quality. I don't really like Micro Four Thirds. I would never recommend it to too many people, but in video, it's actually pretty awesome. And especially with the Metabone Speed Booster, I'm shooting like at F1.2. Uh, you can get kind of a shallow depth of field out of it, not like a full frame camera, but it still looks pretty decent, especially using prime lenses like the 42.5. It's kind of like an 85 millimeter equivalent and it looks really good. I'm pretty happy. The flip out LCD is really nice. Again, I'm looking at myself just to see if I'm in focus. Um, that's something I haven't really had in a camera since my T3i and uh, it's really nice to have again. I previously talked about the EVF. The EVF is awesome, I really love it. I ended up using it a lot shooting some video. It was just another point of contact to keep things steady and that also brings it to the five axis stabilization. Using it with a smaller lens, the 42.5 millimeter uh, f1.7, I got a big friggin' ND filter on it right now. But uh, this lens with that camera makes some really cinematic footage. There's literally no rolling shutter. Uh, that's something I haven't had in a camera in a really long time and that's one reason why I really love this camera is in body stabilization, no rolling shutter, no overheating, 4K 60 FPS. This camera is kind of my dream camera. Only if it had better autofocus, I would be a little bit happier, but it's, it's not a deal breaker for me anyway. It has pretty decent battery life. I didn't do too much tests. I brought one battery with me and shot a music video. The entire video probably took two and a half hours and I never shut the camera off. I had it running the whole time, not filming the whole time, but I had it on the whole time you're probably gonna get around an hour and a half to almost two hours on one battery. Um, from what I hear, it's not quite as good as the GH4, but uh, it, it's definitely better than Sony. Another thing I love is when you're shooting 4K video, the screen's actually bright enough to see what you're doing when you're shooting 4K. Unlike the uh, poor old A6300, the screen goes super dim and you can hardly see what you're doing. But uh, maybe that's something that doesn't bother you. Maybe you record to an external monitor and it's bright enough. Uh, sometimes that's what I've done, but it's really nice being able to actually see what you're shooting on the back of the screen. Again, dual card slots, and one thing that's pretty cool is when it's finished writing on one card, it'll switch to the next, and it actually shows inside the camera what card it's writing to with a little LED light, and you can actually take the SD card out and put in a new one so that when that other card fills up, it'll go back to the next card. And uh, that's one of the cool things with the GH5 is you can continuously shoot as long as your batteries are going. Uh, you can just keep swapping memory cards out, and it has no record limit. So they added a joystick to this camera, pretty much like all the new cameras coming out. You can basically select your autofocus point that way, and uh, it's pretty decent. You can also change the size of your autofocus point with the back control dial, and uh, you can also use your finger as well on the touch screen, and there's actually not much lag changing your focus point. Next I want to talk about functions because there's a million function buttons on this camera and you can pretty much set this camera up any way you want and set all your function buttons to do whatever you want them to do. A couple of other things that I want to mention is this will shoot cinema 4K, so not the UHD, the actual cinema 4K uh, in 10 bit up to uh, 24 frames per second. I don't think it'll do any higher than that. I, I'm not sure, I'll put an asterisk if I'm wrong. But uh, that's nice to have in this camera. And one other little tiny thing that you may not find a big deal, but I find it really nice, is that the battery door is off the side of the camera enough and flips out the right way so that it actually doesn't get uh, blocked by a tripod, which is something that this camera has issues with. All right, so I just basically told you all the things I like about it. Now I gotta tell you the things I don't like about it. I've already told you I don't like the autofocus system. Uh, it would have been nice if they had an updated phase detect system like every other camera out there. But yeah, I mean, if, if you shoot with autofocus and video and you need that and you need something good, Sony has it nailed, Canon has it nailed. Canon definitely has it nailed with the dual pixel autofocus. Sony definitely has it nailed. And uh, the X-T2 is actually pretty decent now since the new firmware. But uh, if you need autofocus and video, don't look at the GH5. It's, it's just, I'm just gonna say it right now. I'm not even gonna waste my time telling you to try all these different settings because I tried a million settings and it's just, not good enough for what I need anyway. If I'm gonna be using it on a gimbal or something like that, and uh, if you're a YouTuber who vlogs, it's not gonna be the best for that either. Um, right now, Sony is your best option, unfortunately. The face tracking is kind of a joke. It doesn't really work from what I can tell. Um, I didn't get any better results using face tracking than I did using regular tracking. Um, low light performance isn't amazing. Uh, you get up to about 1600 ISO usable enough. Some people go on and say 6400 is clean, but to me, 1600 ISO is probably the max I would do. And uh, check out some of these samples at 3200 ISO.
I think that if you get up to about 3200 ISO and 6400 ISO and you need to use some denoising, it's probably usable. But for me and what I do, I would probably never ever bring it past 1600 ISO. One thing that's kind of stupid is you got to pay for V-Log in this camera. That's the flat kind of log profile. I shot in Cine D the whole time and uh, I would have liked to try some log stuff, but I'd have to actually buy it and they ship you a, like serial number or something that you load into the camera. And <laughs> that's kind of stupid. Uh, Sony obviously gives you S-Log right in the camera and uh, I'm not probably going to get it. I might. I don't know. We'll see. And another thing that's kind of annoying that I didn't realize was going to be inside this camera was when you're shooting at 180 FPS, um, it's not actually shooting at 180 FPS as an output file. You have to actually use variable frame rate and what happens is you set your desired frame rate, so 24 frames, 30 frames, or 60 as your final video, and then you go into your variable frame rate and shoot at that frame rate and it actually compiles it into a video with the desired frame rate you chose, like 24, 30, or 60. I mean, whatever, it's not a big deal, but it would be nice to have the actual 180 frames per second file. All in all, guys, this camera is a tool to make awesome videos with, and uh, I'm excited to share more videos with you that I've shot on this camera and more photos that I've taken with this camera, but uh, right now, um, that's basically all I'm going to talk about today. It's not like a massive review that I usually do jumping into the menus and stuff. Uh, maybe I'll make little videos one off here and there and uh, maybe post in the comments if you want to see some other tests. Basically I've had fun shooting with this camera and uh, yeah it's just a tool to tell a story and if autofocus is how you use your tool to tell stories then maybe this camera's not for you and you need to get a Sony. But for me, I like to manually focus. I feel like I can be more creative. For me, it works out really nice and I'm really happy with the camera. And uh, I mainly bought it for video, so that's why there isn't a lot of photo stuff in this review. Maybe if you wanna see a review with more photo stuff, uh, just let me know in the comments and I'll do that. Anyway, guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give it a thumbs down twice and I'll see you in the next one.